Prince Dax. This is Royal Financials. Our topic of this video will be why should we invest and why most of us don't do it. Um, the reason why we should invest, if you look at the um, options that you have to save your money, you can either put it in a savings account, a CD, a money market, or things of that nature. Uh, the things about those, the, the thing is about those that they don't draw that, many, that much interest. You can rarely find a savings account that will draw anything over one percent or anything close to one percent interest annually. Also, on CD, you do have some CDs that can draw maybe three percent or four percent, but it takes a long period of time. Now, some companies do run specials where they may give you three percent in a year, but they're here there. So, you have to keep up with inflation. So. The annual, the average in inflation rate is around about 4% right now. And if you're not making 4% return on your investment, you're not really keeping up with inflation. Because money loses uh, value over time. For example, um, if I take $10,000 and I bury it into a ground and I keep it there for 15 years, I go back to it, what am I going to have? $10,000. Actually, I'm going to lose money because maybe 15 years ago, that $10,000 had more purchasing power than it does 15 years later due to inflation. The price of everything goes up. Even I'm 28 now and I have seen where I used to be able to take a dollar and go to a vending machine and maybe get two or three items. But now you can barely get one item, if that. So that is the value of the dollars dropping and inflation. The price of everything is going up. So you have to, your investments, that's the reason why you should invest because it keeps you ahead of inflation and it keeps you building your future. You're losing money every day if you have your money sitting in the savings. Now, with that said, you should have a savings. You should at least have maybe three months. That's the rule of thumb. You should at least have about three months of uh, your savings set aside. And if you don't have a savings, you should not be investing. The reason why is that because a lot of people, they don't have a savings and they invest their money. And when they need their money, they go pull out on their investment to maybe cover something, maybe a tire burst or anything like that, an emergency that came up. That's not a good thing because sometimes in investing, the time that you may need the money may be the worst time for you to pull against that money. So with that being said, set aside your money first. Have a, uh, emergency savings. Have your savings to where things may come up. Then you will branch off and start investing from there. So, with that being said, that people know that they will lose money over time and that investing is a good thing to do, why don't most people do it? The answer to that, well, I won't say the complete answer, but the answer that I have gotten a lot is either they don't, they are worried about scams, they're worried about risk, or they just don't make enough money. What they say, hey, I don't make enough money, you know, so I can't invest. So, with that being said, if you don't make enough money, there are ways to give yourself a raise. If you, all the money that you bring in is constantly being spent and you don't have any disposable income, that means one thing, you're living out of your means. So you need to find ways that you can cut back on your spending to have a disposable income to where you can actually save and invest. Things to you can do to help you with that, you can maybe, do you need um, 2,000 channels or whatever a cable or maybe do you need to have this magazine subscription or any of these little miscellaneous items that you may have around the house do you need a house phone and a cell phone do you need the latest and greatest do you need packages on your cell phone those are little things you can trim a little bit maybe save $20 from this phone bill maybe save you know $50 from the cable bill and you can loosen up some of your money to where you can actually set aside for your future so you if you are, if all the money is coming in and you're spending it all, that means you're living above your means, and you need to make some adjustments um, in some places. Now, granted, some people have unique situations to where they may be recently divorced, or maybe have you know child support issues, or they may have uh, other assets that's requiring that money at this time. Those things are understandable. But to the average person, if you find ways that you can cut back on your bills to increase your disposable income, you should look at those things. Um, risk. The golden rule is no risk, no gain. So the more risk that you're willing to take, the more possibilities of having a gain. So a lot of people don't want to absorb those risks. They say, well, I don't want to invest right now because it's too risky, the market is too risky, or whatever. When I'm talking about investing, I'm not talking about just stocks or whatever. I'm talking about stocks. I'm talking about real estate. I'm talking about a 
the whole investment industry together. There are plenty of things. If you don't trust the stock market, purchase some land. Maybe purchase a house. Anything that will gain value over a period of time. Those are things you need to look at. So, with that being said, when people say, hey, I don't make enough money right now. When I have this raise or I get this promotion or I get this new job and I make more money, that's what I'm going to save. Now, the thing is, when people make more money, what's the first thing they always do? They always spend more. They don't save more. Most people's minds, when they make more money, the first thing they think about is, wow, now I can afford this or I can afford that. And that's what they do. Nothing wrong with spending your money, but you have to also think about your savings. So, for an example, some people may say, hey, when I have it in 10 years from now, when I get this new job, that's when I'll start saving. Now, Time and money, those are the equations you have to think of, time versus money. I'm going to give you a quick example of how time and money go together and can cost you a lot in the future. For example, in this story here, let's say we have person A. Person A is, at the age of 22, they start putting $3,000 a month into a, a Roth IRA. And they stop at the age of 32. From the age of 22 to the age of 32, they put $3,000 in a month. And we're going to just say they got an 8% return annually. So they did that for 10 years, then they stopped. Then we say person B, you know, comes along and says, hey, I'm going to wait till I get to the age of 32, then I'm going to start. That person gets to 32, they start investing. They invest from the age of 32 to the age of 62. That's 40 years of investing. Now, at the end of the day, which person do you think would have more money? If both of them got 8% return, annual returns on investment, they both put in $3,000 a month, which person do you think, person A or person B, that would have more money? The answer is person A. And the reason why is person A invested for 10 years and they invested, we're going to assume that they both got 18, 8% returns, but person A has time on their hands. They started way earlier. They invested their money, and their money constantly accumulated that money, interest on top of interest, compounding interest over a, period, a long period of time. So that goes to show you where how time can cost you in, on the back end. So a lot of people always say, hey, I don't have enough money. You do have enough money. For example, let's say if you just, everybody goes to lunch. Let's say if you just took back $10 a month, you know, $10 a week. $10 a week. I'm not going to go to lunch for one day out of the week. I'm going to eat at home or whatever. You take that $10 and maybe you just set it to the side for your kids. You set it to your side for the, your kids, $10 a week, it's $40 a month. You do that for 18, for 18 years. And we're just going to hypothetically speak and play it very conservatively. Let's say you only made 3% uh, interest annually. That itself is over $11,000. For 18 years. So when that child turns 18, you can say, hey, I have $11,000 to give you or I have $11,000 portfolio or something that you can have tangible to give that kid to set the next generation up for success. Now, the reason why a lot of people may say, man, $11,000, that's nothing. What are you going to do to $11,000? But $11,000 is better than nothing. Ask yourself, when you turn 18, what do your parents have to give you? If that answer is nothing, I'm pretty sure you'll be happy to get that $11,000, correct? Exactly. So never say, hey, I don't have enough money or that's not going to be anything because those little uh, contributions over a long period of time slowly add up. So those are the topics I want to hit. Those are reasons why you should invest. That's time versus money. Um, you got any questions, please let me know. Again, this is Royal Financials. Thank you for watching.